two special guest speakers ready to bring the word. It's going to be a really amazing message. I remember a couple weeks ago, we were doing a leadership night here at the church, and I heard them speak um, a version of this message. They altered it a little bit for tonight for you guys, so you guys are special to them. Everybody say, I'm special. You guys are special tonight. So I heard them speak this message, and I knew that it was just God saying that this was supposed to be this week. We've been in a series called I'm Here But Talking About Purpose, and so they're going to come up and they're going to take over on week four. If you guys could come on up, give them a warm elevate welcome. Come on for John and Rose Gonska. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Hey, guys, listen, it's an honor to be here. Um, It's no small feat for us to actually be back in the house tonight. A little bit about myself. Before I go into that, I want to say such a warm Thank you to Pastor Tyler, Pastor Grace. Um, Can we give it up also for the worship team that did such an incredible uh, job tonight? You know, it wasn't um, that long ago. I won't say how many years, but I was actually saved a little bit in this area right here. Um, So this is, and it was a service on a Tuesday night, very similar to what we're seeing here this evening. So this place has been very, very special for me for many, many years. But before we begin, um, I heard some disturbing news uh, about COVID, and it's a side effect of wearing masks too much. I don't know if anyone has actually heard of this or not, but we're going to test it out. turns out if you're wearing a mask too much, you're no longer able to smile and raise your eyebrows at the same time. So why don't you turn to your neighbor and see if you can smile and raise your eyebrows. Turn to your left. Can you do it? Does anyone have this side effect? Turn to the other person. Does anyone have this side effect? No? Okay. Now, if you're single in the place, don't say that I never did anything for you. Okay, we got a little icebreaker here. Okay, yes. So, my name is John Gonska. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Like I said, I was actually saved here uh, when I was was 16 years old. Um, And this was was actually my first home church after my parents split. So, it it has been a, a home church for me for actually many, many years. But after I graduated high school and moved to New York City, I got the chance to meet this wonderful lady to my left here. So, Rose, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Is this working? It's working. Um, As you can see, I have an accent, or as you can hear it, it's because I'm not American. I'm from South America. I was born and raised in Caracas, Venezuela, and then I moved to New York City um, when I was young, and that's where I met handsome men and we built a family there (laughs) so that was back in 2007 that we actually met and what happened was um, I was in college we met at a wine bar I was waiting tables trying to make my way through college and she was one of the girls that came in one special night May 9th of 2007 and the rest is history what we actually did is we we did build a family and I think that we I think that we have a photo of the family if we have it up here. Okay, so let me tell you about the family that we see here. There's some extra people in here that are not that did not come actually come from us. We see <laughs> me in the middle. My aunt is on the side here, but you see my wife and then my son Roman who's 7, my daughter Chloe who's in the, uh, she's 7 months old and then my daughter Tiffany on the far left here. She actually had her birthday today. She just turned six today. So we came from her birthday party. And we're, we're actually happy uh, to be here with you guys today. So if you, who here, who that's in the house here tonight has been here for the last three weeks straight? Anybody? Okay, a lot of us. Okay, so for those of you who are not aware, Pastor Tyler has been going through a series that is helping each and every one of us discover what our purpose is after we become Christians. Each of us has a very unique purpose that God has given us, and um, the messages that have been going on over the last three weeks have highlighted different ways that you can discover your purpose. I wanna give a little recap before we dive into what what Rose and I are gonna be talking about tonight. So week one was who, week number two was what, week number three is when, and tonight we have another big question that we're going to try, do our best, to answer tonight. I want to kind of frame what tonight is going to be. There's, there's sermons, there's preaching, there's people driving fire down your throat sometimes. <laughs> Who knows what type of uh, church services that you've been to in the past. But I want to tell you tonight, we do want to have a little bit of fun, but the main idea for tonight is going to be some teaching. 
Um, Rose and I have had the opportunity to be in a number of countries together, learning and teaching and growing different sizes of churches. And it's our honor um, to be here tonight to actually share some of the information that we've, that we've learned, some of the experience that we've had along the way. You see, you come into a place like this, and if you're new to church or if you're unfamiliar about how everything works, it can actually be pretty intimidating because on the onset, it, when you look up here, you see all the lights, you see everyone who has beautiful voices and singing and <laughs> who's good with the microphones up here. It can appear that everyone who's actually involved already has everything together and they got it all figured out. However, the, the real reality is there's a few things that you can learn about what's actually happening here tonight that can break down and I would say simplify your understanding of what church actually is to make it a lot easier for you to figure out where you can take the next step and actually get involved. So tonight, we are going to be answering the question of what? Or, or sorry, where? <laughs> where? Where do you start? Because there's a lot of different places that you can, that you can take your next step in walking with God, but sometimes it can be hard to figure out where to start. So to begin, I would actually like to start with a verse that is very important for us. It's going to be the, it's going to form the basis of what we're learning here tonight. And that's Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. It's a bit of a long verse, but you'll understand quickly why it's so important for tonight. It goes like this. You are no longer wandering exiles. The kingdom of faith is now your home country. You're no longer strangers or outsiders. You belong here. With as much right to as to have the name is Christian as anyone. God is building a home. He's using all of us, irrespective of how we got here and what he is building. He used the apostles and prophets for the foundations. Now he's using you, that's all of us. Fitting you in, in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all of these parts together. We see it taking shape day after day, a holy temple built by God, all of us built into it, a temple in which God is quite at home. Before we begin, let me say a quick word of prayer. Lord, I thank you so much for what you're doing here tonight. I thank you for the opportunity to worship, the opportunity to bring your word, the opportunity to, to have the freedom to be able to have these conversations that we're having here tonight. We pray for everyone who walked through the doors that they would not leave the same. That Holy Spirit, we invite you into this room, we invite you into the conversation that is taking place tonight. And we ask for your transformational power to be in this, in this place and, and within each heart and mind tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, so we're going to have a little fun. I want to give you a little bit of color. We gave you a brief snapshot about how we met in 2007. And the fun part about that is we ended up dating. Like I said, we met in 2007, but then we dated for about three and a half years before we got married. And I'll be honest, I think if I, if I would look back, and correct me if I'm wrong, we did have, we had some ups and downs, some highs, some lows while we were dating. But all, all in all, well, we, hey, it was three and a half years. A lot happens in three and a half years. But I'll say this. When we actually got married, we got married in, in late 2010. When we got married, we really began to see, when looking back, our life really began to take off in some really incredible ways. And one of the biggest ways that our life began to take off is when we actually found a church home and we actually started serving. Now, I'll be honest, the way in which I started serving uh, is a little bit embarrassing or a little bit, I don't know, I don't the right word to use. I'm going to tell you the story. You can judge yourself. And it, there are judgments here. You, you feel free to judge me. So here's what happened. I wanted to get more involved in church, but I had no idea what in the world I, I could do in church because I, I hadn't learned anything about how church, how church worked. But I knew this one thing. We, we happened to go to a church where in order to get into the church every Sunday morning, you had to wait in line outside in New York City. Now, I'm not a huge fan of waiting in line, but my wife is definitely not a huge fan of waiting in line because there's been about only, if she's not running, she's wearing these things right here. And it's not fun <laughs> to be standing in line in New York City walking on the hard cement when you've got some high heels on. So, she, so we found a church home after we got married, and we loved it. Don't get me wrong. We really, really did. But we didn't like the waiting in line. And she just asked me, is there any way that you can figure out how we don't have to wait in line every single Sunday morning? Uh, 
I don't know. Um, so I started, I, when I was in the service, I would be looking around, saying hello to people, and I noticed that up in the front right, there was a whole section of saved seats. And I didn't know whose seats these were. I knew they weren't the pastors. They weren't the, the, the people that were preaching. So I asked, I asked somebody one day, uh, hey, what are those seats for? Oh, and they started listing out the different things. And one of them was called the AM Crew. So I said, okay, tell me a little bit about the AM Crew. Well, these guys were guys who got to the church on Sunday mornings at 5 a.m. And they helped set up the church because the church was already, they didn't have a, a building. They just had uh, clubs and uh, nightclubs that they met in. So I said, hey, I'll be happy to join the AM crew. So I got there at 5 a.m. so that my wife could actually get there at 10 a.m. when the church started so she didn't have to wait in line. So that, that's actually how I began serving. And at the end, we'll tell you a little bit about where we went from there. But before we get there, I just want to share with you a couple quick slides that will help um, really simplify everything that's going on here in church and hopefully give you some encouragement about or some vision about where you can take your next step. So, the church simplified. If we can put up that, um, that next slide um, that has circles on it. So, there's really, there's really three key categories when you're thinking about every single thing that's happening here. Yes, we already have a building, so we're not going to cover the logistics of buying a building or, or leasing property or something like that. <laughs> when it comes to actually what's happening here every Tuesday night or every Sunday morning when church is happening, it really is broken down into three key categories. First, we have the platform. That's up here. That's everything that's happening here. That's the music, the sound, the people doing the, the transitions, the offering, and people bringing the word. So that's everything that happens at the platform. That's, that's number one. Then we have the operations. So that's everything kind of behind the scenes that you don't see that's, that's actually going on. We have some lovely operations people that are running the slides. Woo! Give a hand for them, doing the cameras, the videography, people that are working in the offices that, um, that make sure all the administration of the church is handled. And then we have really what is my favorite and, and the key core component of church, and that's all the teams that are people facing. So you can see up here, this. That is everything. Those three categories is how every, everything actually works. Now, it's, it's hard to see because not everyone's wearing a name tag when you come in, so you don't know every single thing that everyone is doing, but that is literally exactly the breakdown of everything that is happening here tonight. So, um, you may be asking yourself, if you see that and you see these these actual teams that are under, you see the platform operations and people, these are real teams that you could raise your hand and say that you would like to be involved in um, here at Elevate. But how do you get involved? Um, and, and what would it actually look like? Well, the next slide that we want to talk about is simply what it means to get involved with leadership and what, it may, what, a, what a leadership track may look like for you to go from someone who doesn't know anything about what's going on here to someone who is leading a team and growing a team. So if we can go to the next slide. I just want to chat, chat, chat through briefly what we're taking a look at here and then I hand it over to Rose to give you some examples of what we're seeing. So number one is you see something, you see something that, you, that you liked on the screen or you said you may be interested or God has put an area of the church on your heart and you want to get involved. That's number one, serving. You just raise your hand, you say, hey, Pastor Tyler, where do you need help? I wanna get involved, I wanna do something, and then, uh, then you just begin serving. You get on a rotation, any, any one of the people that you see up here can help you get involved with, with church. The number two, you're beginning to, to lead a team. So that means you're going, you've gotten some experience, you know what's going on, maybe you're on the VIP team, and you're taking care of all, all of the new or, or recent joiners to Elevate. That's a very big deal here because whenever anyone comes in for the first time, it can be intimidating, and to have someone um, actually giving you uh, or anyone else that's coming in a good idea and a warm welcome, it's a, it's a bit, very, very big deal. So say, say you're involved in the VIP team, a couple weeks go by, a couple months go by, and you've had some consistency, you're beginning to learn um, all the new faces, all the old faces, then you begin to lead the team. And there you're taking on some more responsibility, you're beginning to organize, um, beginning to schedule people that are actually, uh, that are serving along, alongside you in the team. And number three is you're, you're beginning to grow the team. There's a big difference between leading and growing. Because growing 
is you've, you've turned into someone who is showing up to a place and has a role to do, to someone who is actively looking to see, are there other people that are looking to be involved in church? And am I, am I asking them, would they like to be involved? Rose always talks about the power of invitation because there may be people to your left or to your right that's, that all they need to take the next step in their faith is someone to ask them, hey, are you interested in doing this? Have you ever thought about doing this? Would you, I, I really think that you would be good for it. Would you like to try this or that? All that is, there's real, real power in invitation. And that's how you're growing the team because you're, you're taking people that are not involved in church, you're inviting them and they're joining the team and the team is growing. And the last one is, can be the hardest, but it really, really is important for a growing church. We've seen over the course of this summer, more and more people coming to Elevate. And what that means is, yes, it's good to see more people coming. We always want more people coming. There's no doubt about it. But that also means that the teams need to grow. And as the teams, as, as the, as the teams grow, there's another thing that needs to take place. There can be other areas that maybe there isn't a team, but there needs to be a team. Maybe there's something that, uh, uh, some type of sermon that God has put on your heart, but you, you don't know how to action it, and you, and you want to see it be a part of this church. Well, the way that that takes place is, number four, if you're, if you're being a leader who is releasing, then that means that you're raising up others behind you so that you can go on to take the next step. And what the next step could look like for you is starting a brand new ministry here at Elevate that doesn't even exist yet. And to give you a bit of an example about that, um, Rose has something that she would like to share. Sure. So um, we were serving in New York City at the church that he mentioned, Hillsong, um, for five years. And then we decided to move to Australia, to Sydney, Australia, to pursue ministry. And when we got there, we met, the first thing that we did, the first Sunday that we were there, we met with a service pastor. And we asked him, hey, we come here from New York. My name is John, you know, my, my name is John Rose, and uh, how can we help? Where can we help? Where can we serve? And then he said, sure, let's meet up next Sunday at the 9 a.m., after the 9 a.m. service, and I'll get something for you. And I'm like, sure, this sounds amazing. Oh, my gosh, he's already had a plan for me. I don't even have to think about it. Well, I got there on, the, on that Sunday morning, and he hands me a tray with watermelons. And I was like, oh, my gosh, watermelons. He goes, okay, Rose, um, go out there after the service and just greet people with the watermelons. And I'm like, oh, I mean, this was uh, not very sophisticated for me. <laughs> you know, watermelons were juicy and crazy and messy. And I'm like, okay, fine. I went out there. It was very hot with this tray and the watermelons and just saying, hey, how, how, how was the service? Did you like it? Just talking to people. Well, the watermelons disappear in a minute because it's really hot there. <laughs> so I went back to the service pastor and I'm like, hey, the watermelons were gone in no time. He goes, well, I'm sorry, I don't really have a budget to buy more watermelons. You need to stretch the time that you talk to people. <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, you can force people to talk longer. And, you know, I just, you know, I thought everything was awkward. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go and buy more watermelons. <laughs> so I spent the money you know, from my pocket, bought more watermelons. But anyway, I end up meeting a lot of people, and soon after that, like within weeks, we began, John and I began to uh, introduce people to people, connect people to people, connect people into connect groups, and um, it was just amazing. Everything was end up growing to the point where um, we decided, to, we, we realized we needed help. We were like, okay, we need help. This is, it is time to, to make it official and build a team. And so then we end up, instead of connecting people to people, asking people if they would like to join the team. Um, within a few weeks, we had six different couples join our team. And then um, within six months, the service pastors asked us to, to raise up a leader to take the team and then um, for us to create and build the same team at a different location within the church. And so we did that, and that was amazing. It was very hard for me to release the team at first, because I'm like, well, we, we work hard, but <laughs> it's not for me, it's not for us. So when, you know, whatever you're doing, it's not necessary, you know, you're doing it for others. So it is very important that we are releasing. Um, so we released that, and then after six months also, the pastor said, 
look, this uh, connections team is going so well that we want your, um, um, your structure for, uh, we want to create this same team all across services, all locations. And so that was really amazing. So the three, the three takeaways from this um, that I want to talk about is, number one, be open. Because um, trust your leaders. They, are, they have been chosen, they are anointed, and they are appointed for such a roles. And so at first when the pastor gave me the tray, I was, you know, what, what, I mean, watermelons. But he knew what he was doing, and that was amazing. Number two, be faithful. You know, don't wait for what's on your hands matches your heart. At first, I was not excited about it in my heart. But you know what? Within weeks, I saw the why behind the what. And it was amazing to see the impact that it was having and how much I was connecting. We were helping people be connected. And lastly is be expecting. So it is be open that your leaders know what they're doing. Number two, be faithful with what's put on your hands and what you get to serve. You get an opportunity to make a difference. And lastly, be expectant because we plant and we grow, but it's God that makes it grow. And this grow only because of, you know, God bless it. And so it was, it, you know, it, it ended up being really amazing. So, yep, be open, be faithful, and be expectant. So at the beginning, I talked a little bit about how we had just gotten involved in New York City, but now you're also hearing about another country. And as we close tonight, I just want to give you a perspective of what, has, what God has done in our own lives when we said yes to serving in the church. We had, our, we had lives. We had two kids at the time. We had, I had a job. She had a business. We thought we had figured everything out. We thought we, we had a mission and a vision for our life. But what happened is over the course of years where, where we got the opportunity to serve in different areas of the church, and the more, the more that we got involved, the more that we saw God redirecting and directing our life. And the bigger our lives got, the more people that we had in our life, the more friends that we saw that we had, the more community that we got to be involved in. And that turned into us thinking that we were going from thinking that we were going to be in New York City for the rest of our lives to God actually redirecting us, bringing us to Australia, bringing us to Tel Aviv and Israel, and actually bringing us back here still involved in ministry. So the truth of the matter is, I'm not gonna tell you, hey, if you start serving now, you're gonna, you're gonna quickly end up in Norway doing, doing some, <laughs> some mission trip or something like that. But the reality is, God is a huge God with a very, very unique plan for each and every one of you. And you discover that plan as you serve in the church and as you build his kingdom and as you help others along the way. I can say that truthfully because that is what we saw in our own lives. It wasn't that we, yes, it was a joke that I started serving. It was, it was funny. And it was also somewhat annoying that I had to get up at 4.30 a.m. on a Sunday morning. It, it kind of put a crimp in what I did on Saturday It wasn't nights. annoying to me. Well, <laughs> fine for you, yeah. But I want to encourage you with that. If God has put something on your heart, you've seen a few of the different things, um, ways that you can actually get involved uh, and serve. Maybe there's something specific that, that God has put on your heart and that you really say, okay, I, I do want to get involved in this. Or maybe you're on the other side where you're saying, I do want to get involved, but I don't have anything specific that I want to do. Just reach out to Pastor Tyler, reach out to Grace, any of the other leaders that are here tonight, and just say, look, here's what I want to do, or hey, I want to do something. Yeah. How can I get involved? Because it truly is the very next step in your walk with God. And literally, you have no idea what could be in store for you if you're making the decision to put God first. Thanks, Amen. guys. Thank you guys so much. Can we give them another round of applause? Awesome word. You know, what's really powerful about this message is that I love what they were saying. They said, be open and be faithful with what you're given and be expectant what God can do with it. You know, their story is basically my story in a completely different way because God is a God that, that, that we can't really put together all the time. We can't, you know, expect him to do the same thing the same way every time, but God has principles. And what they just described is their story of how they met Christ and after they met Christ, they got involved in the church. And this is supposed to be a step uh, by step type of thing. Their story is my story in a different way. When I first came here, I came here about 10 years ago. Some of you know my story. And before I got involved, I got saved. 
you know, I came into the ministry and I was, I was, I came in here, you know, it was in the other building in the back and, and there was a bunch of, of middle school and high school kids back there and they were crazy and they were jumping up and down during worship. They were raising their hands. I'm like, what is going on? This is crazy. And I had come through a Wednesday night baptism service just the previous week. And so I started to come on a weekly basis and I started to feel this pull on my heart and more than a, just a pull to do something in the ministry, it was a pull towards Christ. It was a pull towards Jesus. You know, the first step is that you have to understand that before God gives you your purpose, before you figure out what you're called to do, you have to come to the one that called you in the first place. And maybe you're here tonight and you're thinking, I don't know why, I don't think I have a purpose in this place. Maybe you've even been struggling with suicidal thoughts and you've been struggling with hopelessness, thinking that your life is at a dead end, that you don't have, that nobody has a plan for your life, that you don't have a purpose here on the earth. But I want to tell you right now that your Father in heaven created you. He gave you a purpose. He gave you a calling. He loves you. He has something very specific that only you can do by the power of His Spirit. And doing these little things, it seems to be little things, doing the ushering, doing the the VIP team, doing the production team, being on the worship team, all this stuff is really, really good. But if you don't meet Jesus, what is really the point of all of it? And that's why we gather here. That's why we do all of this. That's why we went through all those different things. That's why we have a VIP team. That's why we have production. That's why we have worship team. That's why we bring a, a message of hope and, and of the gospel is because we want to make sure that people come in here and before they find out what their purpose is, we need to make sure that they come to Jesus first. So if you're in this place right now with every head bowed and every eye closed, if I could just have uh, John come up here and play the keys for me really quick, that'd be awesome. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I just want to ask you a question. I know that being here might be a little overwhelming and thinking about your purpose in life can be this daunting task. It can be this thing that is just overwhelming. But like I said, I want you to know that before you come to your calling, before you come to figure out what your purpose is in life, like I said, you have to come to Jesus first. And God will use your opportunities. God will use you serving. God will use it when you're planted in the church. He'll use it to propel you into the purpose and the calling that he has for your life. But he wants you to come to him first because first and foremost, it's about a relationship with God that Jesus Christ died to purchase for us. And if you're in this room tonight and you've said, Pastor Tyler, I don't, I don't know this Jesus. I don't, I've never walked with God before. I've never started a relationship with him and I want to. I feel this call on my heart. I feel this pull in my spirit right now. In the inside of them, the depths of my heart right now, I feel something pulling me. I want to tell you that that is God. Because God created you. He loves you. And he longs for you to be in relationship with him. So if you're in this room tonight, you say, Tyler, I've never accepted Jesus. I've never accepted the forgiveness for the sin that I've committed. I've never started a relationship with Jesus in this place. That's the first step in finding your calling. And if that's you and you want to accept Jesus, you want to say no to the things of this world, you want to walk away from the things and the way that you've been living selfishly, and you want to walk towards Jesus and walk with him and find his forgiveness for your soul and find eternal life forever in heaven one day. I want you to raise your hand on the count of three. One, two, three. I see your hands. Awesome, I see your hands. You can put them down. I'm going to ask one more time. The Bible says today is the day for salvation. You don't know what's going to happen when we walk out of this room. None of us have any clue. But don't put it off another day. If, you, if you're not 100% sure that you're going to heaven one day, that you're accepted in God's eyes, if, if you don't know that God loves you, if you've never walked with Jesus before and you want his forgiveness, you want his salvation that he offers you, I want you to raise your hand one more time on the count of three. One, two, three. Awesome. Awesome. So for those of you who just raised your hands, I'm so proud of you for making that decision. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. And while we say this prayer, I want you to know that it's not the prayer that saves us. It's not this fancy way that we maneuver our words that gets our, our, forgive, our sins forgiven and it gets us a spot in heaven. It's us talking to Jesus. Jesus is the one that died for you. Jesus is the one that wants to save you. So when we repeat this prayer, I want you not to say it to me. Don't say it so that you can hear it. Say it so that Jesus can hear it tonight because he's alive and he listens and he hears every word that you say. With that being said, I want everybody in this room to gather and repeat this after me in support of those who are accepting Jesus in this place. Say, Heavenly Father, I repent. I turn from my ways. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I've messed up time and time again, but I find peace in knowing that you accept me just as I am. So Jesus, I put my heart in your hands. I walk away 
from my own selfish desires to follow you and live for you all the days of my life. In your beautiful name, forgive my sin and create for me a place in heaven with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we give these guys a round of applause? Praise God. So happy for you guys. So happy for you guys. Well, one more round of applause for John and Rose for bringing the very powerful. I love that word. I love how practical it is. And if you're in this place and you want to get involved, that's like I said, the first step. You meet Jesus and then you get involved because what our purpose is in life is our purpose is to follow God, to love God, and to love people. And in order to do that, we get involved in the church. We are the church, the, the body of believers that are gathered together. We are the church. And our desire is to see this thing grow. We want to see others come in and find hope where there's hopelessness. We want to find others that come in with sicknesses and disease. We want to see them get healed. We want to see people who have never met Jesus before meet Jesus in this place. And if you want to further the kingdom of God, don't think that you have to be the one preaching the word in a microphone. Don't think that you have to be the one on the worship team. You can bring somebody to the Lord. You can play a part in building the kingdom of God by opening doors. You can build the kingdom of God by serving on the production team behind the scenes, but I promise you if, if, if the production team people were just totally lazy and they didn't do their jobs, you guys would notice, you know? And, and so we all play a part in creating this atmosphere where the Holy Spirit can come and bring people to Himself. So if that's you and you want to get involved, you're already saved, you already met Jesus, you're saved, and you walk with Him, you have a relationship with God, I want you to come up to me if you want to serve in this place. I'm not, nobody's forcing you to serve. We don't want somebody just to come up because they feel like they have to. But if you're interested and you want to grow and take your relationship with God to the next level, serving is an amazing way to do that. To start with serving. To start with saying, here I am, God. Use me even if it seems, you know, little. Even if it seems small. But that being said, I just want to say one more quick prayer over everybody in this room. And like I said, if you do want to serve, come find me. Come find Grace. Grace, if you could stand up and wave your hand really quick. Woo! I'm just going to say one quick prayer and then we'll end. We'll set up volleyball net. We'll have a great time. And... We have been setting up the breakfast party outside in the lobby. So if you love breakfast, in Jesus' name, after my prayer, I want you to run out to the lobby. We've got some awesome goodies set up for you out there. Well, Father, right now we thank you so much for what you've done in this place. God, we thank you for John and Rose. We thank you for the word that they brought forth. God, we thank you for the freedom that it brings to understand that it's not difficult to find our purpose. It's not difficult to live this life for you. We thank you that you've made it so easy on us. And right now, God, we just say thank you. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for delivering us. Thank you for being with us every day of our lives. We love you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for coming out. I hope you guys come next week and bring a friend, right? If you want to serve, come find me or Miss Grace after service. We love you guys. Enjoy the breakfast. Hallelujah.